what's what's the word y'all um quick quick video about the deadline okay um I, I promise you i'm gonna get you a video about the winners and losers of the deadline um shout out to the mavericks shout out to the knicks who really dominated the deadline it was a it was not the best deadline we got spoiled last year and the year before that regardless I, i'm gonna put the other video talking about all of those things and we're only two minutes outside the deadline Corey joe just got traded so we got a few bu buzzer beaters coming in i just streamed the last two hours of the draft or, uh, of the deadline i'm i'm so upset and disappointed about my favorite team. And, and over the last couple of years, I've been trying to balance the content, right? I've been trying to talk about the league at large and not let a bulk of my content be about my favorite team. I have to now. Because this is the second straight deadline where the people up top sat on their hands and did nothing. DeMar DeRozan, expiring contract. Well, he had two years left on his deal last year. We should have traded him then. I, I, I love DeMar DeRozan's game. I'm thinking about the grand scheme of this team, right? The, anything I say in this video is not a personal attack on these players or their basketball playing ability because these guys, DeMar DeRozan isn't a phenomenal basketball player. But I'm thinking about the future of the Bulls, the now of the Bulls in this, this team, right? DeMar DeRozan should have been a guy that's been traded. 34 years old, last year of his contract. The Bulls offered him an extension a few months ago. He didn't like the number. And he still hasn't been traded. So that tells me one of two things. This offseason, he's going to walk for nothing. Or we're going to overpay to keep DeMar DeRozan on the team until he's 37 years old. Right? Alice Caruso is having a phenomenal, phenomenal season. He's one of the best defensive players in all of basketball. And this year, he's actually attempting to score the ball. Last year, he was a super valuable asset to potentially be moved. And that was before he was shooting 40% from three. He has this year and next year on his contract. Personally, because I see that this team is destined for another 36 to 42 wins... I am team, even though we love Alice Caruso, and trust me, I do, that we need to capitalize on the value because Alice Caruso being on this team in this moment in time is not winning us a playoff series. So let's trade him while he's at the peak of his powers, while his market is at an all-time high. Do you know how many contenders called about Alice Caruso to be shut down in the last two weeks? We're keeping him. And the next year, I'm just going to assume based on the track record, we're going to keep him then. And he's going to go. He's going to walk for nothing. Or we're going to overpay him. I'm just... I, I, when this front off, this new front office came in, guard packs was gone. Boom. I hated having guard packs as my general manager slash basketball operations guy. They did a bunch of stuff that I hated. I dropped a whole diss track on, on this YouTube channel, I think. Because I wanted them gone. And they left. And I'm like, yes, we finally going to have a savior of Chicago. It's Mark Eversley. It's Artunis Carney Chauvis. They're going to come in. They're going to write the ship. Boom. Immediately, they trade for Nikola Vucevic. They trade Wendell Carter, the pick that became Franz Wagner, and so on and so forth. I, in the moment of time, enjoyed that trade because it was something that was, Vucevic was coming off an all-star year. I was just excited for that trade. We go get DeMar DeRozan. Love it. Lonzo Ball. Love it. Since then. Nothing has happened. And the 2021 NBA season, the 2021-2022 NBA season, or maybe my years mixed up, the Bulls went into the all-star break with the number one seed in basketball. Alonzo Ball is there. The Bulls are hoping DeMar DeRozan is at an all-star, all-NBA caliber level again. Everything is great. We have peak vibes. But but under, under the hood of this car that is the Chicago Bulls, you're like, hmm. This team is 2-13 and 13 against teams above 500. Should we worry about that? Nah, we good. The vibes are great. Lonzo Ball goes down with his injury, and now we fall down, and we make the playoffs. We lose in the first round. Next season come around. They say, hey, Zoe's going to be good. We're going to run it back. And in this moment of time, I'm like, cool. Zoe was a crucial part of the team. Running it back is not a bad idea. We run it back, and things get dramatically worse. Lonzo Ball is not coming back. It's now been two full seasons, two full years since we've seen Lonzo Ball suit up and play basketball. Um, shout out to Lonzo. Get well soon. This team, this organization, this ownership group, and these people in the front office are, are hoping to rekindle the fire that was 2021-2022. We are two full years away from that, that streak where we were good against really bad teams. And to see that not even the smallest asset, Drummond is a player on this team that has been super valuable. I've enjoyed Drummond's time as Chicago Bull. I'm pretty sure he's not going to be on the team next year. 
I'm pretty sure that the 76ers, that the Warriors, that a couple different teams, the Dallas Mavericks before they traded for, for uh, Gafford, were calling about Trump. And instead of taking these calls and, and taking the best trade package for him, he's going to be on the roster for the rest of the season. Again, it's not an attack on him because he's been phenomenal this year. But he's also playing a lot better than the contract that he's being paid right now. So the same thing I said about DeMar, either we're going to overpay him this offseason to keep him around or he's going to walk for nothing. These people came into the front office. And I'm sorry, trades are still happening, I would assume. So I'm just, I'm just, yeah, okay, just the last one was a second round pick for Corey Joe. These guys came into the front office and, and told us a bald-faced lie. We will not accept mediocrity. You will not accept mediocrity. Okay, okay. I love that because the last front office pool was very okay with mediocrity. You're telling me that we won't accept that love. I'm here for it. I, and, and, and in the last two years, what team has been more mediocre than the Chicago Bulls? More average than the Chicago Bulls? It does not exist. And we just walked into another deadline and did nothing. The people in the front office have made one trade over the last two seasons. One trade. That's 30th in the league. The 29th team has done seven. So there's a six trade gap between our front office and the second to last front office. Six trades. And, and Kenny, what is the trade they did? They traded two second round picks to get one second round pick. And shout out to Julian Phillips. I've been enjoying him play. But that is the deal that we've done? Like, my job is to try to cover this sport in an entertaining manner and as objective as possible. This team is making me not want to do that. The team that, that got me into loving the game of basketball, that it has become my whole career, one of the biggest things about who I am as a person is the Chicago Bulls. And this team is making me not want to do that bro there i went on this a small rant a couple hours ago during the deadline about this front office and i feel like a broken record because this video i made four five years ago about the previous regime the previous regime is better than these guys better the one thing about the previous regime, even though they also were okay with mediocrity, at least they drafted well. At least they brought in Jimmy Butler with the 30th overall pick. At least they found Bobby Portis in, in the end of the first round. At least they found this guy, that guy. They did things well. This team, these guys have not drafted well. They have not put together really good trades. The two good things that this front office has done is get Alex Caruso away from the Lakers. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. Alex Caruso, again, is a stud, one of the best defensive players of basketball, one of the most valuable pieces that was potentially being moved and he wasn't moved. They get that. All of the credit. The second thing was bringing in Lonzo Ball. Right? These dudes, cheat. They, they got caught cheating to do that. So you got two really good moves, two really good moves, and one of them the NBA told you you did illegally in four years. Kobe White is in running for most improved player. He's been killing the game. That's not their pickup. They extended him. That's not their pickup. Think about that. And, and, and it, it all starts from up top. This ownership group does not care. They And, and people keep tweeting at me, Kenny, the Bulls are top three in attendance. Well, y'all need to boycott and maybe that'll do something. Bro, that doesn't matter. You want to know why? Because the year that the Bulls were 22 and 60, we were top three in attendance then. They're not keeping this mediocre team together to sell tickets because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what product they put on the court. Us Bulls fans, we ride for our team. We're one of the biggest markets in the, in the world. So whether the team is winning seven games or 70 games, the United Center is going to be packed. I was a season ticket holder the year they won 22 out of 82 games. I drove 40 minutes to United Center doing a fucking blizzard because I love the Bulls. So the people that say, oh, they're being mediocre to sell tickets, they're going to sell tickets regardless. So what is the other reason to be mediocre other than the front office is afraid to look like 
jackasses again. And guess what? They have, you still look like it. Every other person in the NBA world is looking at the Bulls like, what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> this, I don't understand it. The first game of the NBA season happened. And the team had a players only meeting. That was the moment in time where you should have been like, all right, these next three months, we're going to evaluate our talent and figure out who we want to build with. That was what I convinced myself you were doing. No. No. They want, they want to be Danny Ainge without putting in the work to be Danny Ainge. You have to accept the fact that the, some of the trades you're going to do, you're going to walk out as losers in the moment. They want to trade all of their assets for seven first-round picks plus three competent players. That's not the reality of the league, bro. It's just not. These two dudes. Tim Connolly drafted Nikola Jokic and Artunis Karnisovas was there. And now he runs my favorite team. I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go upstairs, shower. I'm taking a trip to Milwaukee. I'm going to watch Bucks versus Timberwolves today, and I'm not even going to think about the Bulls for the rest of the night. But I had to get out this video. And there's a lot that I ain't even said. But I had to get out this video. Back to the normal schedule stuff starting tomorrow where we talk about the Knicks, we talk about the Mavericks, and we talk about some of the real people that made real moves. I appreciate you for watching.